think to Hawaii, civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Out of the Comfort Zone on ThinkTech on Spectrum OC16. I'm your host, RV Kelly, and today I'm here with very special guest, Katie Flashner. Katie, we're going to have you come up on screen here. But, but just before we get started, Katie, could you explain a little bit more about what you do? Sure. Thank you for having me on the show, by the way, RV. My pleasure. Uh, I, am a, <laughs> I am a ballroom dancer and blogger. And I am known, my alter ego is the girl with the tree tattoo. So basically, I dance and I write about my experiences, the good, the bad, and the awkward, um, as I go through my ballroom dance journey. Ah, interesting. So ballroom dancing, is that something you just do yourself, or, or do you also teach other people how to ballroom dance as well? I don't teach um, at the moment. That's a, a future goal. I'm actually, I'm actually still a student. Uh, I'm a competitive dancer, but I compete in a circuit that's called Pro Am for professional amateur. And so I'm the amateur half of uh, my dance partnership, and the other half is actually my teacher. Oh wow! So, so it seems like. Something kind of a little bit out there to be a, a professional or amateur dancer where you're competing, this is what you do. That seems like a really unique uh, career path. How did you get started? Well, it's actually my first exposure to ballroom dancing was for my wedding um, back in 2011. Um, my uh, fiance at the time and I took just a handful of, of dance lessons. We were doing a 1920s themed wedding and we didn't want to do a choreographed first dance, but we wanted to be able to, you know, hold our own on the dance floor, learn uh, some 1920 swing dances, uh, things like that. And I was hooked immediately. Um, in the ballroom world, if you talk to students, a lot of people will describe being bit by the ballroom bug, and it's a very real thing. <laughs> you get, you just the. Um, it's hard to describe the, the emotions, the just extreme positivity that you feel um, as you learn to move your body in time with, with music and with uh, another person. Connecting with that other person is uh, really incredible, and it's definitely addicting. Um, but to address the question about the career paths, I'm actually still working a day job full time. I'm a technical editor with an environmental consulting firm. So that I do on the, during the day, and then nights and weekends I'm, I'm ballroom dancing and I'm blogging, uh, but the dancing and writing are really my passion. Um, I've always loved dance and creative writing, and um, they, the two of them converged in this beautiful way when I was exposed to the ballroom world. So, so tell me about your journey as a ballroom dancer. What did you have to go through? What did you learn about yourself? Oh, goodness. I don't know if the show is that long. <laughs> but um, let's see. I started taking private lessons um, more regularly at the end of 2012. And usually when people start, first start taking lessons as an adult, they just you just want to learn to dance socially. Um, so you can go to parties and um, be able to actually dance the you know songs that are are played. Um, and then the next level up is a lot of dance studios will hold hold showcases, which are basically like dance recitals. You learn um, a specific choreographed dance to a specific song. You get to you know get dressed up in a a uh, fun costume and you get on on a stage in a theater and, and perform for all your family and friends. And that was the route I went because I've always, since I was a little girl, loved dance. And whenever I would watch a live performance, I would literally end up on the edge of my seat because I would just be drawn in. Like I was physically being pulled toward the dancers in that movement um, and the emotion that was expressed through the movement. It was just beautiful, but I was very shy and reserved, 
as a child, and so I never got into, I took some ballet, jazz, tap classes when I was maybe six and seven years old, um, but then I just got, the fear got to be too great. I couldn't, I couldn't push past the fear. I was too shy. I didn't, um, I ended up stopping the classes, and it's always been kind of a regret of mine that I let the fear of performing in front of people and being vulnerable in that way. Um, I always kind of regretted, you know, letting that hold me back. And so when I found out that you could perform and as a ballroom dancer on stage, I was like, okay, this is my chance. Um, this is my chance to kind of redeem myself <laughs> and fix this one major life regret that I've been carrying around. And it was magical. It was terrifying, absolutely terrifying, <laughs> but but it was magical. And after that, it just sort of snowballed. I learned that um, ballroom competitions were a thing. And after my first going to witness my first competition, that was finally my niche. Uh, that was I'm like, okay, this is it. This is where this is the part of the ballroom world that I really want to be a part of. And it pushes me every single day. You know, you first go to the studio thinking you're just going to learn some dance steps, but you end up being confronted with fears and self-doubt that you've been carrying around that you didn't even realize were there until you push yourself to connect with another person, connect with the audience, connect with the, uh, the music, and connect with your own body. It was really surprising to me how much of a mental and emotional journey this was as much of as much as it was learning physical movement that's a really impressive journey that you've been on katie and and i'm wondering if you if you ever look at people around you who who haven't been bitten by the dance bug or who are still you know new to they've never even tried ballroom dance and you think oh my gosh your life would be so much better if you just learned to dance oh of course <laughs> Every chance I get, people, you know, it's amazing how many people I have met where they learn that I'm a ballroom dancer, and that's one of the first things that come out of the mouth. Oh, I've always wanted to try that. I've always wanted to try dance, but there's always some excuse. I'm, I don't have any rhythm, or, you know, I'm just too shy, or I wouldn't be any good, or I'm too old, or too whatever. There's always some kind of an excuse, and every time, like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're too old or too short or too tall or too whatever. It doesn't matter. Everybody has a rhythm inside them that you can connect with and you can dance. And it really, I think that's the biggest part of it that can be transformative is connecting with that dancer inside yourself that you don't necessarily even realize is there. And, and from a, a human perspective, every, every culture you look at has some type of dance. Even going back hundreds, thousands of yeah. years, there were always dances. And, and ballroom dancing in particular, that kind of held, that held a really cool and a really long run. And it's, it's not something you publicly teach anymore, and it's not something you can just be like, oh, here's a nightclub, I'm gonna go in and foxtrot. It's, you, you don't get a real yeah. chance to do that anymore. And so I remember um, in my senior year, I finally, finally mustered my courage and took a social dance class. And I had so much fun. I mean, I learned to waltz, Yay. I learned to foxtrot, I learned to tango, and it, it, like you said, there's so many different things that you feel and you experience. And for me, it was just that one semester. And so I've never danced since. But being able to, to be twirled around the floor by an attractive partner, being able to be coordinated <laughs> and graceful for the first time in my life, it was so powerful for me. And so even now, I'm always like nudging my husband like, hey, honey, why don't we go dance? Or hey, honey, why don't you yes. come try this with me? Um, but he never got the chance to try it in school. So for him, it's still, like you said, this big scary thing where he doesn't want to try it. So I'm, I'm always hopeful that someday we'll, we'll make it out and we'll go dancing. 
I hope you guys do. It's not uncommon. It's not uncommon at all for, especially men, for some reason, to really hesitate at starting ballroom lessons. Um, I think it's just because you go to the studio and you know nothing, and you have to be willing to make mistakes and maybe look a little silly in front of at least one other person, your partner, and then a second person, the teacher. And uh, I don't know, I think that's a little more difficult for, for guys to push themselves to do. But actually, once, once guys do get started dancing, they they'll either stick with it longer or they'll, they'll advance faster. Once they get into the groove and, um, you know, learn, you know, learn themselves that, okay, yeah, like I can, I can do this and this is pretty cool. Then it, it it's motivating yeah. for them. So I hope you can convince your, your husband to at least try, just try one. Yeah, <laughs> try one me too. And see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I think it's so funny because when I talk to women, they are always like, oh my gosh, I wish I could learn. I've always wanted to learn. And men who can dance are so attractive. But when I talk to men, they're like, ballroom dancing is stupid. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. I don't know either. I wish men would pick up the message. And I've, I've said that to I don't know how many men that I've met who scoff at the idea or like, oh, no, that's for, you know, that's for sissies or, or what have you. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Women love men who can dance. Like, if you're looking for for a date, learn how to dance and then go show off those moves. You will have women lining up. No problem. <laughs> and that's absolutely true. I think when I when I, we say this to men, I think they think we're exaggerating. We're really not. The most attractive man in the room no. is the one who can spin you around the floor and make you look like a goddess. And, and really in dance, True story. I, I don't know how it is at higher levels, Katie, but for beginning levels where I was at in dance, it, like the men had the easiest part. Their job was just to kind of like take a couple steps and like troll the woman around and make her look pretty. So it was really easy for them to do, but it, it, they had so much fun and we had so much fun. It is. I mean, even even when you are just doing the basic steps, you know, just just starting out. That's the other great thing about bar and dance versus some of the other dance genres, you know, ballet or tap, is you can go and take one lesson and you can learn how to dance well. You can learn the basic box and then you're, you're dancing like within one lesson. I think that's, that's one of the other things that's just so cool and makes it so much fun even when you're first starting out. I love that. Katie, you have been such a delight to have on so far. And viewers, we're not going away. We're just taking a very quick one-minute break. And then when we get back, we'll start talking about Dancing with Dragons and how you can start. I'm going to the game and it's gonna be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today cause I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps him from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way cause it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you wanna be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says let's go. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, your host on Pacific Partnerships in Education here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every other week, Tuesdays at 3 p.m., we have guests on and talk about the fascinating, interesting, and unique partnerships in education that occur across the Pacific Islands with Hawaii, Micronesia, the Marshall Islands, Palau, Guam. All these places have really rich local education programs going on and the exchange among and between these programs is a wealth of great information helping the islands all learn how to survive and thrive in our ever-changing world. I hope you'll join us on Pacific Partnerships in Education. Hello viewers, welcome back to Out of the Comfort Zone on ThinkTech on Spectrum OC16. I'm your host, R.B. Kelly, and here with me today is ballroom dancing expert, Katie Flashner. 
Now, now, Katie, when we were talking behind the scenes, viewers, uh, we mentioned about some of your, your inner journey that you've gone through and how you had to face your own demons and, and even your own dragons as you, as you went through this dancing process. For sure, yeah. It, um, like I said earlier, it, it was surprising how much of a mental and emotional roller coaster and journey that ballroom dancing has taken me on. Um, it really, I mean, for me personally, I deal with I deal with anxiety. Like I mentioned before the break, I was very shy as a child, and and it's kind of developed into some anxiety as an adult. So it's you know this weird struggle inside where I have this, this passion. You know, I wanted to get out and dance and and perform, but then oh my god, nobody look at me. You know, so and it's um. There's been, there's definitely been moments where I've literally pushed myself to my limit for this passion because, you know, at that limit is when the anxiety gets, gets triggered. And I've had to run to the bathroom during a dance lesson because I was going to start hyperventilating because just even practicing, for me, the bigger triggers were practicing the emotional expression. Um, you, you watch Dancing with the Stars, you know, you see the powers of, you know, such expression, and and I feel a little more comfortable doing it now, but when I, especially when I was first getting into the serious training for competition, it was very difficult for me to even practice that, because I'm introverted, I'm shy, my emotions don't show on my face that naturally, so even to smile big, I have to think about it and tell myself, smile big. <laughs> so it, um, it's incredible, but I've come up with this mantra of do it scared. And that's guided me through and helped me continue to advance up in the levels in competition and become a better performer. I, I can do that emotional expression a little easier now because I acknowledge my fear, you know, those I call in my demons in the head, the, the self-doubt, the anxiety, the, the fear, all those little buggers inside my brain that are screaming, no, don't do it, you're not going to be safe. I tell them, okay, you can just sit there, it's going to be okay, we're going to do this anyways. I know we're scared, but we're just going to go for it. And the great thing about ballroom, you know, there's so many aspects of life where you can work hard and get nothing for it. You know, you can bust your butt at your job and maybe you get a promotion, maybe you won't. The ballroom, you work hard and you see the results almost instantly. Um, competition, you know, the placements, uh, there's a lot of other variables besides just your hard work. But just for yourself as a dancer, Every time I set out to you, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on this specific aspect of my dancing, and I see the results. I feel the results. My teacher, when he dances with me, tells me he can feel the results in our partnering and in our connection. And it's so motivating, and it inspires me to just keep pushing myself, even as I have those demons in the back of my head, still. Screaming, still biting their nails, like, no, I don't think we should do this. I'm like, no, remember? Remember the last time we just did it, even though we were scared? Look how great it turned out. Let's do that again. We, we can do that again. So, and the cool thing is, it's translated to other parts of my life. Um, just growing the blog and the Girl for Tree Tattoo brand, I would never have gotten to where I am today with those pursuits in my life if I didn't just do it scared. There's just no way because you're never going to feel completely ready. And you're, at least for me, I always feel that fear. There's, those demons are always in the back of my head. But it doesn't matter. I just, I just push forward anyways and hopefully reap the rewards. <laughs> That is so true, Katie. And, and as you were talking, I was even thinking of times in my life where I've been like, no, I'm not ready for this. And so there's something I need to do for my business or, or for my relationship or something. But I'm so scared of it that I just like, no, I'll get to it later. I'll get to it later. And I put it off and I put it off and I put it off until finally I'm forced to do it. 
and then I get, I do it scared, and then I get on the other side, and I'm like, huh, that was easy. And, and you've built it up in your mind yeah. to be so much bigger and scarier than it is. Is that how it is with Yeah, bears? we really, absolutely, we really can, we can really mess with ourselves. Like, our brains are so powerful, we can take the tiniest little worry and just blow it up to, you know, this huge problem that we can't take any action, you know, because of this huge thing. But in reality, if we just took a step past whatever was causing us the fear, it's like, oh, it's okay. That wasn't as big of a deal. And it's definitely been that way in dance um, with the, you know, as I practice my expression, uh, like I was saying, or there was certain certain dances uh, that would give me more trouble because they just, the movement made me more uncomfortable. Uh, tango was was a problem dance for me because it has this real like slow movement and then fast. And just that switch, like I couldn't, it was so scary to me. Like I could do the slow, no problem, but it, harnessing the intensity was was difficult for me. You know, I felt like I was drawing too much attention to myself, even though that's what I'm supposed to do. And then that transition from the slow to the, the quick movement in Tingo, that sharpness uh, that Tingo has, that was, that was difficult. I had to really push myself. But now, it's, you know, I love it. Tango is one of my favorite dances now. So it just, yeah, it just took pushing just a little bit you know, just keep pushing at it. And it doesn't, you know, it's not like one push and you're there. You know, you just kind of keep nudging yourself. Like, okay, like, just, you're not, you don't have to get it perfect right now, but just take one more step toward it. Just give it one more try. And, then, you know, eventually you turn around and you realize, oh, I made it. I'm there. I, oh, well, that wasn't so bad. Okay, cool. Where's the next challenge? Let's go. I think that's so cool, but I know a lot of our viewers are still going to be like, mm, I'm not sure about this whole ballroom dancing thing. So what advice would you have for people who are just starting out and, and maybe need a little help? Definitely. I mean, if it's a matter of, you know, I don't know what studio to, you know, if there's, if there's a dance studio or I don't know, you know, where to go. Me, personally, I went on Groupon and found a studio that had a deal, and that's where I started. Um, but if you want a better idea of what to expect, um, viewers can actually go to my blog, thegirlsoftreetattoo.com, and there's a page there called Dance Diaries. And I wrote just a short little ebook on learning ballroom dance, and it basically covered everything that I wish I had known having the first year of my dancing. I wish I had known before I started, just so I was a little better prepared. That would definitely give people um, a leg up, um, a little advantage if they wanted to start searching around for, for dance lessons or other opportunities to dance. So it sounds like you've got a free ebook with all the things you wish you'd known when you first started out, and our viewers can find it at thegirlwiththetreetattoo.com. Yes. It's right. not, well, it's not free. It's, um, it's like $5. Well, um, I, but I you can find really... it at my website. All right, so we can find it oh, at your sorry. website. And so, yes. gentlemen, if there are any men watching this, this may be something you want to read for yourself or send to your wife because <clears throat> my birthday is coming up, and this is what I want from my yes. husband. So, and women, if you're watching and you're wishing your husband would take you out dancing, well, tell him and send him this guide. So all of you, if you want to strengthen your relationship, break through some of your barriers, or even just have more fun with your partner, then you should definitely go to thegirlwiththetreetattoo.com and find that book. But Katie, is there, where are you going in the next few years? What should we be expecting to see from you? Oh, you should expect to see me on the dance floor a lot more. I'm actually going to a competition in New Orleans in a couple weeks, and then uh, there'll definitely be a few more on the calendar. And then just in the digital landscape, I, 
I plan on growing the blog and the Girls of Tree Tattoo brand a whole lot more. Uh, my mission in general is to really inspire and enable other people who are pursuing bar and dance either as a hobby or a passion or an obsession. <laughs> I really want to be able to inspire and enable those people to become confident and joyful ballroom dancers because that really, that's what's inside of us all, that confident and joyful being and it just takes a little step, just do it scared and then do it scared again and you can find it, you can connect with that, that dancer inside you. So definitely be on the lookout for, for inspiration from the girl with the tree tattoo. And I'm, I'm curious, Katie, are we ever going to see you on, on the big screen TV, like Dancing with the Stars or American Idol or something like that? Well, you know, the ABC executives are, are watching the show. I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to talk. <laughs> but who knows? Who knows what the future will bring? I really, I just, whatever opportunities come up for me in ballroom dance, I'm going to stay open to them because this journey has been incredible so far. I've learned so much about myself. I've grown as a person. I've done things I never thought I'd be able to do. And I've just learned that I'm actually capable of doing all those things I never thought I could do. So for me, I feel like the possibilities in the future are have very little, very few limits. I'm happy to hear that, Katie. Thank you so much for coming onto the show. I really appreciate your time, and I wish you the best of luck in the future. Thank you so much, RV. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. And viewers, if you stay tuned, you will see us next week at 1 p.m. on Out of the Comfort Zone. We'll all be here interviewing Kamisha Muhammad, who is a mindset, who is a mindset lifestyle, and confidence coach. See you then.